Now, there's a difference between econom types of economics versus types of economies. And in types of economies, here we're talking about how society then is ultimately organized. And the best way to think of this is that societies exist on this continuum. And on the one end, we have pure market-based systems. And on the other end of the extreme, we have command economies. And then in the middle, we have combinations of the two. <coughs> now, most economies are somewhere in the middle. Let's talk about what we first mean by the extremes and try to talk about a few of the extreme examples that have existed in history and then talk about the middle. Um, when we talk about a market-based system, we basically mean no government involvement. The, basically, the markets determine everything. There are incredibly very few examples of where you have no government involvement and the market just determines everything. And really, the best examples we have are maybe like 18th century England. Because that would be an example of um, a society or an economy where, like, you know, at the time of, like, you know, Dickens and stuff, right? Like, kids working in mines, kids working in factories, you know, people really poor, and there being no social safety net, there being no um, expectations about, you know, minimum standards of living. On the other extreme, we have the command-style economies. You might more frequently know these as... Um, communist economies. So these would be no market. All of it is centrally planned. Again, very few examples of this extreme um, because even in communist countries that exist today, like China, like Vietnam, um, they still have markets that exist in these communist, um, politically organized economies. Um, but getting really close to a command-style economy would be something like a North Korea. Uh, Vietnam, like in the late 70s, mid to late 70s, um, after the U.S. withdrew, Um, Zimbabwe, especially in the 1980s, <coughs> the USSR, um, especially in the 1960s, Mongolia, and a good deal of Eastern Europe. So you really didn't see too many private markets existing. Basically, the government did everything for you. What you see... Now, you can have an economy like the U.S. I'm not sure if it would exactly be there, but we have a lot of... Um, if as compared to, I'm not picking on a country here, I'm really not, and I'm not sure if this is exactly true, but if we were to compare the U.S. to France, that in these two economies, um, or the way that these two countries organize themselves, the U.S. has less government involvement in the economy than France. In France, they dictate maximum hours you can work, when holidays are, you know, um, there's just more things that are regulated. And you may agree or disagree with that kind of way of living, but that's a different issue. Whereas in the U.S., we kind of allow, we don't tax as much because we don't provide as much of a social safety net as would exist in Western Europe. Maybe...
Canada would be right here, perhaps, right? A little bit more government involvement than the U.S. But that's the idea, then, is that an economy, through voters deciding on how things are, can decide where they are in this mixed portion here. And that would cover things like health insurance, right, and health care. Are we going to decide to have it done by the government, or are we going to let the market do it? Um, how about our housing, right? Are we going to allow people just to build stuff, or are we going to have public housing? All these are kinds of things that society then votes on and decides where they want to be on this continuum. But if we now compare number three to number two, again, previously we looked at types of economics, right? And I was just talking about the general theory, the general discipline of how one thinks about how things are allocated. When we talk about types of economies, we're then basically talking about the social, political decision of the proper role for the government. 